Good evening, everybody. I'm back, your girl, tonight. We're going to have the amazing Wayne Danell. Looking forward to speaking to her because she has just qualified for the 2021 Tokyo Olympics. So this is going to be a very, very, very interesting conversation. Hope you guys are ready. Hello, Llewellyn. Hello, Michelle. Hello, everybody that's joined. If you've joined, hello, Timba. Just say hi in the chat, in the comments. We're waiting for the amazing world-renowned athlete Wenda Nell to join. We're going to be chatting to her tonight. Let us know in the comments where you're joining us from. It could be all over Africa, it could be all over the world. Let us send you a shout out. We want to hear from you guys. Um, I'm going to try and pronounce your names, but I'm not that great. <laughs> We had amazing races so far over this weekend. If you guys check on that track um, on our page, on our Facebook page, on our YouTube page, there's been some amazing competition and runs happening in um, or at the USA Championships with amazing times. Today, Give Dread a 9.94. Um, we had some great times on the 400s. So, track and field is on fire, guys. We're ready for the Olympics. Hello from Iswatini. Just waiting for it to join. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Hello, Wenda. Hello. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. It's so good to have you on Back Your Girl. This is a new series that we have started on Backtrack where, you know, we speak about the powerful woman in track and field and what we are achieving out there and you know just obviously to motivate our youngsters and our young women to come through because track is on fire right yes definitely it makes I me mean, excited i know and i mean with you you just ran the qualification oh my gosh how did you celebrate uh with pizza <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna get into that i'm gonna ask you a lot of questions about that so let me just introduce um our series tonight Good evening, guys. We are on Back Your Girl, Backtrack Sports. This is our new series where we speak to track and field athletes, especially female athletes, and we get to know them. You know, we get to know them on a deeper level. We get to know what they do other than track and field. We get to know what they eat, how they train, how they prepare for championships like Olympics. So we're going to be speaking to Wenda Nell tonight, who has an absolutely beautiful CV. You guys have to listen to this. Wenda Nell. So I started racing with Wenda now back in the day, but we'll get into that. She is a three-time Africa gold medalist, right? She is an all-Africa Games silver medalist. She is a Commonwealth Games bronze medalist. That's not it. She holds the record for the, or with the team for the 4x4, 400-meter relay, and she has nine national titles. Come on. Yeah, I mean, come on. Do you get better than that? I was reading that and I got so excited, like, oh my gosh, you just keep achieving and keep achieving and keep achieving. Obviously, you started track and field very young. Take us back to those days. Yo, how much time do you have? <laughs> we have a lot of time. We're speaking to uh, the star. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people that will tell you the, the story of a, yeah, to explain a movie, what it's about, and then you don't have to go watch it yourself because I've given you so much detail. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'll try, I'll try and keep it in a, in a nutshell. Um, since I can remember, I've started with running and I've enjoyed it and I've had a big passion for the sport. Um, yeah, I've recently actually had a lot of um, conversations with regards to that, this and yeah, where did my love for the sport start and how did I come to, to do athletics and, and so forth? Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, like I said, since I can remember, I just had such an enjoyment for the sport and actually any sport. Um, primary yeah. school, high school, I did a lot of different type of sports and yeah, athletics, just one of those that, that stuck. Um, I think once you, you realize you, you're a little bit better in, in one sport than another, you, you, you pursue that. Yeah, and, no, definitely. And yeah, so I just, I mean, it wasn't a, a smooth ride, like no no one's journey ever will be, but mm -hmm. highs and lows, it, it just makes it so much more exciting. And yeah, I've, I've had the dream to go to, do, to the Olympic Games 
also when, since I was a, girl, a little girl. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Don't know how that happened, but, <laughs> but here I am. You're still here. You're still going strong and your six back is still on point. Oh, um, my <laughs> you've always been the girl on track with that six pack that chiseled six pack like I, I um, mean I've always wanted it how do you get that right what you're talking about <laughs> everybody um, watching go to winner's profile and look at a six pack and see what no. I'm talking about <laughs> it's one of those things that I mean so often in life I will say that the, the way people see you is never the way you see yourself so mm -hmm. I will always refer to that that thing as well I, I don't know there's so many other athletes that's really physically built extremely mm -hmm. well you included um <laughs> so I, I don't even know what people are talking about <laughs> but okay wait just just so we can clear this out at the beginning how many how much ab exercises do you do a day or a week oh my word um to be quite honest I actually, someone asked me that once and I still remember, yeah, till today that I think it was early high school. Um, we had a training session with, with one of my coaches and we were a group of athletes and we had to do a few setups. And I promise you, I struggled to do 10. I, I could not. <laughs> we don't I, believe you in that. <laughs> I've improved over the years, but yeah, that's, that's actually one thing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... For me, it's I I embrace the way I look. I yeah, I'm I'm grateful for opportunities that I get, um, and I think everyone yeah, it's so such an individual journey. Um, mm. it, you can easily compare, and just by looking at someone how they look, we we so often like yeah, I want to look like that person. So just just mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I I think by myself. Okay, people are faffing about so-called six-pack i don't know like i said yeah. what people are talking about but yeah maybe i want someone else's legs or arms or <laughs> i hear you i hear you so just uh, be happy with what you have in you yeah. that's what you're i agree with embrace, you 100 percent. embrace your individuality if that's mm -hmm. a word <laughs> no that's beautiful so when obviously your career started if i mean what from what i remember on the 100 meters and then you change to events continuously continue, until you got to the 400 meter hurdles. Tell us about that process and that journey. Yeah, that's, that's quite, um, that's been a, a, a roller coaster ride, but an interesting one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, long story short, my, I've got a sister, one of my sisters, she's um, two years older than me, and she started with hurdles in, in primary school. So once the teachers, kind of identified her talent in, in this specific event. Two years um, later, when I arrived, it started with the age where, where I can do hurdles in grade, I think it's grade five, 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can do it, you can do it. And then, okay, I went and I tried and, and I loved it. So, yeah, I think still today I, I give her a lot of credit for my how my career has, has turned out because, yeah, she was always the one in front of me doing things first. So I just kind of followed and, um, yeah. And then, so I did short hurdles in, in primary school and then long jump and sprints and high school. Um, yeah, I did 300 hurdles. I think it's still grade nine. Um, and then I stopped with, with the longer hurdles. We go over to 400 hurdles but i've always said I, I would one day i would like to come back and try this event it's challenging i love to run um so from there i just did like the sprints long jump short hurdles yeah and then the time came that i wanted to try the 400 hurdles just i think it was my second year of varsity um i yeah, like remember how I discussed with my coach. Now I'm just going to do it one year. Just want to say that I've done it, and then I want to go to um, heptathlon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here I am. I think 12, 13 years later, still busy with the 400 hurdles. <laughs> and I mean, you have, I mean, two times in the Olympic Games for the 400 hurdles. Obviously, in 2016, that was your debut, and you are preparing for the 2021 Tokyo Olympic Games. That is absolutely amazing, and. How are you preparing differently from 2016? Obviously, your debut, you know, the experience is a little different because we're new to the game, you know, we're new on such a big world stage and now you've been there, you've tiled it once. How are you preparing differently for the next one? 
Yeah, I must say it, it for me personally, it was quite daunting at first, my um, going to my first Olympic Games. I think you, you're so overwhelmed. Um, you want to enjoy it. You want to take every moment in, but at the same time being so focused and prepared for your race, um, yeah, just like to execute what you are there for, that for me, in a way, it was a little bit, I think I, I've put a, a, um, put a lot of pressure on myself to perform. And then when I look back, I kind of, I think I've missed a lot of the, the kind of the, what the experience was about. Um, not that I didn't enjoy it. It was still great um, experience to be there. But yeah, definitely, I think this time around, will once again be a lot different with the situation we are in with the COVID um, and so forth. But yeah, I think just mentally, physically, um, I do feel that I'm better prepared. Um, also coming out of little niggles and injuries between the two, the, the period between the two games. Um, and currently feel strong. I feel healthy. Um, now it's just to kind of... Um, what do you, how do you call it? Yeah, just uh, work on those final small things just to yeah. you know, stay healthy. Um, mm -hmm. Don't do crazy stuff. I mean, we are, we are two, two and a half months away. So, yeah, just look, look after myself well. And, and then I'm sure, yeah, I, I will be able to execute. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And I just saw the other day that you are in the top five of the 400 meter hurdlers going into this Olympic phase. Obviously, as athletes, we don't focus on that. You know, it's anybody's game. We're going, we line up over there. But I, I believe your preparation has set you up for, for great success. And, and we also believe, and we back you 100% that you're going to do really great at this Olympic game. So we're really proud of you. So kudos to you, Wenda. Um, I, pleasure. We got a few questions. And one of the questions was, how do you psych yourself up for... A, a big event like I mean heat at Olympic Games is like finals and national champs right how do you psych yourself up before a race well yeah there's usually two parts obviously kind of the the days building up to the event and then also on the day with warm-up etc so for me usually I will look back at races that I felt good um, I will watch them again just to kind of get into that mental space to know that I've done this before. I felt great. Um, yeah, and then also training sessions, building up to the to the event. I will. I, I get quite a lot of motivation out of my training sessions. So those are the, the things that I will hold on to. Um, but I, at the same time, I'll also remind myself that it's a, every race is a new race. So mm. anything can happen. Um, so one shouldn't kind of hold on to the past too much because – it's a new experience. Um, but yeah, that's usually how my mental preparation, physical preparation will have a build up towards that. And then on the day, I love music. So I will warm up with music. I will like wake up with music. I will, yeah, just this little small things that I have kind of in a routine, but not too much as I also know things can change instantly. So mm -hmm. I'm not someone that's, that likes to, yeah, to hold on to, a routine too much but mm -hmm. I have my things that I do um, I will pray I will have my quiet time I will yeah and just remind myself why I'm doing this and yeah that's kind of it is nerve-wracking usually the the seconds before you go down in the block I will just kind of take that one deep breath and that's usually yeah. the thing that calms me down yeah yeah and then then I know I'm ready <laughs> I mean a lot of people always ask me how do you feel when you go down a, in, into the blocks? And at that point, there's no feeling anymore. You're just no. ready to race and you're ready to do the job. And, you know, you're ready to kill it out there. But what is your three top songs on your playlist right now? On your warm-up or pre-race playlist? My, okay. Uh, the Champion. Um, oh, now I'm blank. Who sing that? <laughs> You, you can sing it for us, don't worry. <laughs> very, um, yeah, psyched, it's a nice psyched up um, song. Um, Rooftops of uh, Jesus Culture um, and Look Up Child of Lauren Daigle. That's kind of three of my go-to um, songs. And then I will, I have like a routine where I will play the ones that I want to listen to. Um, and then I have a mixed playlist where I just, 
in general, nice from Afrikaans, hip hop, Christian music, worship. Um, yeah, just feel good kind of songs that, yeah. that I have a nice beat to, um, makes me calm, makes me excited. So, yeah. That's awesome. I'm, I'm going to definitely look those up and I will think about go. them. I'm blank now. <laughs> That's fine. Timba says, yeah, you like moves like Jagger. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, I like, like Jagger. Yes, that's yeah, that that is the type of music that I that I actually like. Just to get that nice beat, a uh, little yeah, just to pump up the adrenaline a little bit. Yeah, no, that's good. Also, when though we know that you're a qualified nutritionist. So tell us, what is your pre meal um what is it what is your pre meal consist of? Then also what is your post competition meal or post um training meal consist of? I'm usually quite consistent in, in what I eat before a race, but also once again, things can change. So I also know that if I can't control what I pack in or travel with or whatever, then I can adapt. But usually my pre-competition um, competition meal will be pasta. I love pasta. Um, usually with a, either a, just a normal spaghetti bolognese, mince type of um, sauce or chicken, that's fine. But yeah, I love pasta. Um, on the day, that's kind of the, the evening before. On the day, it's just the normal wake up. I will either have some porridge, a um, bit, bit of eggs, or mm -hmm. yeah, later the day, maybe a peanut butter sandwich or yeah, something, something light, not too, too big. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I believe in my banana. Wherever I go <laughs> to warm up, I have my banana. So, yeah, that's usually what I will have during the day or, yeah, you know, just snack a little bit here, maybe a, a energy bar just for, I, I don't eat too much at, at the time, but I will rather have little bits during the day, uh, mm -hmm. make sure I hydrate enough. And then afterwards, usually, <laughs> well, most of the time when it goes great, then I just don't care. I eat whatever. I'm hungry. I, what, whatever food is there available, that's available, that I will eat. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, sometimes when it didn't go that well, you're like, oh, I'm not even that hungry. <laughs> but yeah, no, you're stressed. <laughs> important for me to um, to feel my body after a, a training uh, a competition as well. So now I will I will have a decent meal, um, but it, I'm not very specific with that. That's good. So, Wenda, obviously, you know, you've had a very long career and you still have a great career ahead of you. And as a woman in track and field, we face a lot of challenges, specifically as women, but also just as athletes in general. What has been your biggest challenge thus far in your career? Sure, that's a, a very good question. Um, I think, yeah, as a as a female athlete, um, not not to take anything away from from the males, but I think because it, it's it's such a hype. Um, when they perform or achieve something, I think in general, not just for me, but in general, females does not always get the the recognition that um, that the that the male athletes get. I'm not saying that we should only do something for the recognition, but yeah, in general, I think that's mm. that kind of uh, a female type of challenge in sport. Um, when it also comes to sponsorships or yeah, publicity. Mm -hmm those type of things. So, um, yeah, I think that's something that, that I would like to change as well mm -hmm. after my career. Well, while I'm still busy and then after my career, just to put a little bit more emphasis on, um, yeah, the performances of females. I mean, it's also mm -hmm. incredible how overall sport has, has changed over the years. And definitely there's a change. I can feel it, but there's more work to be done. Mm -hmm. And how do you think we can bridge that gap, I, especially as like athletes, like yourself, elite athletes, professional athletes, female athletes that's still in the game, and those that have retired already? What can we do, you know, to help bridge that gap and help increase um, recognition for female athletes? I think it's um, it's definitely started starts at a young age. So mm -hmm. if you're retired or an older athlete or yeah, you know, whoever will yeah you know, feel how can I say? Anyone feel free to to contribute, but yeah, um, I think definitely starts at a young age to 
not just empower the 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 girls but also to educate them on what it is mm -hmm. actually about to to have that determination to excel in maybe not just sport but but in anything that you um want to achieve or mm -hmm. yeah goals that you set for yourself um i think for me if i look it's always easy to look back on your journey and and give advice and tell people rather do it this way rather do it that way but everyone also needs to walk a journey to before they realize that they would have done something different um but i think the society as well um currently with the younger generation it is everything is so instant so everyone mm. wants instant results we have i mean i've had the conversation recently with with the teenagers and the young yeah you know, younger um people um that i mean with our phones we we have everything at the at our fingertips in an instant we can do, like just go about um and I, and i see that more and more in in general life as well that um yeah the the younger kids they they don't have that determination when things don't go their way it's easy to to just ah oh, this is not for me um yeah just to, i'm not saying they they just give up but yeah it's just easy if it doesn't go well it doesn't interest them anymore so yeah. i would like to to kind of change that at school level already that sometimes it goes very well in school level they perform they excel um and then we get that transition phase where things starts to to become a bit more difficult um mm -hmm. because even hard work is not always a guarantee of i'm going to get what i want so sometimes you you go through journeys you you go through downs um season after season and then maybe 3 4 years later only you get your breakthrough so yeah i would like to to start at at school level to try and i don't know i, I will still be creative to find ways how to but yeah i think we can um just kind of to empower more more women and more female athletes and girls from a young age to actually make them aware that they can they can excel in something definitely yeah definitely i mean you can even make those who are listening or their parents or their siblings who are listening tonight aware that i mean you started track and field at what age i think i was 6 <laughs> when i was 6 guys when she started track and field and she made her olympic debut in 2016 you know yeah. and that is i mean look at look at that and that is the work and the perseverance that it takes to actually get there i mean olympics is the highlight of every athlete's career yes before olympics you had milestones you know really great milestones and big big medals that you have won and national titles that you won but olympics is what we what we train for and what we work for as athletes and i mean from 6 years old to making your debut in 2016 look at that you know that's not that's hard work that's perseverance that's determination that's dedication and i think already with your story and making your story known to young kids they will realize that oh my gosh you know there is actually a future in this and there's a possibility that i too can be an olympian so i should work hard and chase my dream so i think you know from an ex athlete and speaking to you as a professional athlete i think we need to remember that we have to be mentors for these youngsters and we have to you know motivate them and share our stories and and that will help them grow and and she's like when i said i'm like wenda you still at it and you're still doing so well you are an inspiration and a motivation to myself you know what i mean and i think the more people hear that um the more we can inspire the youth so so thank you for that wenda that's, that's beautiful and um, yeah. um, yeah no i just wanted to add that like you've mentioned it's it's so important that we should share our stories i think we can learn so much from one another and that's mm -hmm. also lacking in a way because i think we feel ashamed of maybe if we haven't achieved what we wanted to so yeah no i will definitely encourage we have to share our stories mhm mm and when i mean what do you believe was lacking or i mean as a youngster because we know we have amazing youth athletes right we know in south africa goes to youth olympics or world junior champs or world youth champs we we get amazing results right but then there's a little bit of a break in transition when we get into the senior phase um yeah. from your opinion or in your opinion what do you think is lacking in that in that transition phase um yeah like i've mentioned i think this that um drive of determination or that that urge to to actually uh, persevere that that kind of just falls away 
um, the youngsters get interested in something that's that's easier. That's yeah, it's just just um, from the top of my head. But something else that that I was also or that I am thinking about a lot recently is um, we should yeah, from my my point of view or my opinion, we should um, yeah um, invest more in coaches. I think. Mm. Coaches play such a big role in an athlete's life. Um, yeah, one can can coach yourself or be by yourself. Or so, but I think just to to have a good relationship with a coach, and sometimes that to to, to get that from school level athletes. Um, yeah, they they move from from school to varsity, different destination can't kind of get into a, a nice training group or this is mm-hmm. not a coach available in a specific area. Um, so I think that's also kind of a thing that, that we as um, South Africa in general can definitely give more attention to, um, just to invest a bit more in our coaches. Even school coaches taking them further to, to actually also continue to help um, the athletes from school level into senior level. Um, because, yeah, I think sometimes... You, you get that idea of um, a school coach can't take athletes further, which which is mostly the case because they are, are based at the school and they need to focus there. They are kind of coaching the, the school um, athletes. So then it's, I think I've, yeah, I've, I've experienced that, that many athletes struggle to find a place after school where they actually can fit in or they, they have a nice um, pre- relationship with a coach. So mm-hmm. I think... We have to invest in our coaches more. <laughs> no, I agree with you 100%. And I feel like from a female point of view as well, like if we had more female coaches, yes. you know, that can help female athletes because obviously um, when it comes to our genetic makeup and being a woman, we, we, we go through challenges that men don't go through. And sometimes our male coaches don't really understand that. And they don't really understand how it affects our training and our competition. So I mean, if we could have more female coaches coming through, that could maybe be your post-career venture. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you can I, develop some elite athletes there. Yes, I, I'm still, I'm still um, thinking about my post-career uh, op- options, opportunities. Mm-hmm. So maybe, you never know. <laughs> so tell us, Brenda, we have nine titles. What are we going for? What is the goal? What is the aim? Ooh. <laughs> um, well, I've I've heard a lot recently that nine is not a great um, yeah number, so I must yeah go for one more. <laughs> but we like yeah, the sound of that. <laughs> I, I decided that I I will leave that open for discussion and leave a little bit of suspen- um, suspicion there. Maybe maybe I'm back next year. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you've achieved a lot. You've been to Africa Champs, all Africa Games. You've been to Commonwealth. Um, I'm sure you've been to a World Championships. You've been to an Olympic Championship. Is this Olympics 2021? Is this your final? Is this your finale? Is this where you bow out for Olympics? Or what else is on the cards? What else do you want to achieve? Yeah, I think that that's definitely... Um, I'm actually currently... My, my biggest aim or goal that I, that I still want to achieve in my career is a, is a specific time. Um, that I will also not disclose yet, but <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think it's any athlete's dream to get that performance or that time at an Olympic game. So how mm-hmm. awesome will that be? Maybe I can get the time there. But yeah, I'm I'm chasing times currently. So that's that's my my goal. I'm very grateful to have qualified for the Olympic Games and. Now I can focus on my preparation further and hopefully, yeah, I can do that perfect performance in, in Tokyo. I mean, we back you. We believe you can you. achieve that perfect performance in Tokyo. But you mentioned chasing times. And obviously I know from the national champs that happened a few weeks ago, you were chasing that qualification. You know, and a lot of people came to you and tried to give you advice and you knew that you wanted to get that qualification. What advice can you give other athletes that are still chasing that qualification, whether it's in time or distance? Never give up. (laughs) Um, For me, I'm I'm just in general, um, I don't know, I I would describe myself as a joyful person. So Mm -hmm. 
for me, there's always hope. There's always a chance. As long as you believe, you, you will never know. Maybe the next one. Maybe the next mm-hmm. one. So mm-hmm. Just per, uh, um, persevere and, and continue. And, yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's that important to you, then, then you will, you will uh, yeah, just try and, and get that qualification or the time or the distance um yeah i mean it's it's never a guarantee um but as long as you enjoy what you do um most most of the time in my career that moment that i actually relax and i'm like but i i enjoy this okay mm. when the time comes or the distance comes or whatever that's okay i i love what i do then those were actually the times that i ran my best Sure. That's such an important message. Love what you do and know what you want and then it will come eventually. Jeez. So inspirational. <laughs> when, what has yeah. been the highlight of your career so far? Yo, I will definitely have to say Commonwealth Games 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not just because I'm, it's easy to, to have a medal moment as a highlight, but um, it's just the journey leading up to the Commonwealth Games is something I will embrace forever. I was just in a much different space, um, something that I haven't experienced in my whole career with regards to training, just how I approach the, the build-up towards the Commonwealth Games. So, yeah, that was very special. And then, obviously, um, yeah, that medal is something that is it's kind of a reminder of, of the journey. So, so it's awesome to have a, like a... Um, memorabilia what do you call it um, yeah memorabilia is correct <laughs> <laughs> to um yeah just to to have that reminder but but yeah it's it's not about the medal but it's nice <laughs> um but yeah and then definitely just becoming an olympian so mm. even though performance didn't go as planned or as i wished it's, it will always be an amazing feeling just to to have participated at the olympic games yeah no i mean just going to the opening ceremony and being amongst such elite athletes and world-renowned athletes is an absolute amazing feeling and I mean there's only a few people in the world that can call themselves Olympians so well done Renda so we are going to play a game a quick one I'm going to test your knowledge of track and field female athletes oh goodness (laughs) Ria got 17 in our first chat so let's see you get 30 seconds right what must I do you get 30 seconds Okay. Name as many female athletes that you know in track and field. Oh my goodness. Okay. 30 seconds. I'm going to start the clock. Okay. Oof. Are you ready? Uh, okay. okay. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay. Um, you wait, said wait, wait. Current, 30 seconds. current athletes or ex athletes? Any athletes? Ex athletes is fine as well, as long as they were in track and field. Okay. A provincial level up. Okay. In the world. In any in the- anyone. Okay. In the world. Okay. Start with I my. I need to know them though. Okay. I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> you can go Google them afterwards. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait. Are you ready? Three. Uh, two, yes. One. Let's go. Winda Nell, Zenai van der Waal, Thailand Biel, Giselle Magerman, Rika Netsteenkamp, Karina Hoorn, Delilah Mohamed, Georgian Molin, Sarah Sarah Pet Peterson, um, Femke Bol, Sydney McLaughlin, um, uh, Alison Felix, um, uh. Sage Watson, Cory Carter, um, Ashley Spencer, um, Shamir Little, um, uh, Pandile Kubeka, Boy Pelu Chimesu. <laughs> um, Time's up. <laughs> you got 18. I'll give it to you. Okay, Woo! thank you for You take the lead. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's crazy because that's 30 seconds. What is that? Your 300, 250 meter? 230 yeah. meter time about. Yeah, no. He did well. He did well. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's interesting when you when you put me put me on the spot. Mm-hmm. I <laughs> when I'm calm, I have all the answers. When I'm on the spot. <laughs> but you know what I like? I like the fact that you started with Wenda now. Come yes. On. That's Come the, on. You have to mention yourself. Back <laughs> yourself. Back yourself. Yes. I'm no, an athlete. Thank you. Although, although I'm, I'm a veteran, I'm still an athlete. <laughs> no, I mean, you're an amazing veteran. You're not just a veteran. You, you're out there motivating the youngsters, motivating us ex-athletes to maybe take our spikes back out of the cupboard. 
You're doing yeah. the things, Linda. Come back, people. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, now, thank you so much for being our second guest on Back Your Girl on Backtrack Sports. We wish you all the best for the future. We know that you're going to do extremely well at the Olympics. We know that those times are going to come because we, you work hard and also you have faith. So we believe in you and, and we back you 100%. Um, oh, sorry, and, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah, you I forgot, you forgot me now. I forgot you. I'm, so sorry. I'm retired, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we really do back you, and we trust and believe that you are going to go and represent South Africa and South African track and field athletes out there. We support you 100%. And just a closing statement from you. Um, just give us some words of wisdom for young girls that want to achieve what you have achieved. Yeah, I think, first of all, I would like to say thank you for you for, for hosting this and, and backing the, the female athletes as well. We appreciate that a lot and, and for all the encouragement and, and the support you bring. Um, yeah, in general, I think if I have to give a summary, kind of a summary of why I'm still in the sport, it's just that, that little fire that, that started burning inside of me when I was that little girl. Um, I just mm. always take kind of my whole journey back to that. Why did I start? Why? Just hold on, find your why and hold on mm -hmm. to that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, there will be many days that's not easy and it will be difficult. There will be challenges, disappointments, but don't be afraid of them. Those are the, the times that, that I've experienced that I've actually grew more as an athlete and, and persevere more. So yeah, just hold on to your why. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Brenda. And thank you to everybody that tuned in. There's been some awesome comments and people saying that they really look up to you. They really want to meet you. Um, so yeah, I hope that they, the dreams come true and they get to meet you. And thank you for being such an inspiration to us, ladies. And we'll be watching you and all the best. Thank you so much. I appreciate Bye. it. Have Bye. Have a good evening. Bye. You too. Bye. <laughs>